Is your debt causing you sleepless nights? Knock your debt out with Debt KO. And your debt won't be the only thing keeping you up at night. Debt KO, free impartial advice on all your debt. This is something that comes along every now and then in generation and it's special. This is Coombe Cassius for Eiffel TV in association with MTK Global. Delighted as always to be joined by the big truck himself, David Price. How are you, mate? I'm good, mate. I'm good. How are you? Why do you look different? Do I? Yeah. Well, in what way? Yeah. Best, better. <laughs> you changed your hair? Well, I've had a bit of a beard today, more short ones on, oh, yeah. No, you hey, look good. It, just, just looks a bit different. I, I, look, I, look, I look well, do I? You look well. You haven't had any surgery well. done, have you? No, no, don't need an ear transplant just yet. <laughs> um, yeah, huge heavyweight week this week. Um, so it's a bit weird if we're not talking to you, David, to be honest with you, about your opinion about what's going to happen this Saturday. But is this going to be routine for Anthony Joshua, or is this potentially a banana skin for him against Kubrat Pulev? Um, I, I think I think Pulev's a, a lot a lot better an opponent than a lot of people are giving him credit for. You know, if, you're, um, if you look at his amateur career, his professional career, he's, he's fought at the top level right the way throughout. Time isn't on his side. You know, he's 39. And his last couple of fights haven't been, should we say, at the highest level. So, you know, He's threaded water while he's been in the mandatory position. But he, he's a serious operator. I know him quite well. I trained with him before the Olympics and then I trained with him for, for a couple of my pro fights. And he's a hard man. And, you know, he's um, he's strong. He's fit. He's, he's durable, you know. And I've seen to someone before, I think it depends what, what mentality Joshua goes into the fight with. I, I think his best bet, I mean, obviously, I think he can be pull up in a boxing match, but I think he might be best served to just go out and put it on him type of thing and let his shots go and, you know, attack is the best form of defence because the longer the fight goes on, Pulev is still going to be there if, if, if it's a boxing match and he's going to keep... He's going to keep firing away at Josh's, Josh's body. Uh, I think Coogan, I think he's just going to keep trying to stick, like, you know, jab, ah, jabs to the body. He's got a strong left hand, pull up, if anything, it's as strong as his right hand. You know, if you watch his fights, he's not a big right hand, big backhand puncher. He's, he's, he's very left hand dominant. And I think just um, stabbing Joshua's belly with the jab for the merely doors, he's going to rope. That later on he starts slowing down, and and it's a reality that it can happen because I think in the Rivers fight, a lot a lot of his body shots, uh, you know, they didn't really get mentioned as much, but they had a, a big part to play in that loss to Rivers, I, I think. Um, so I think Joshua, you know, attack best form of defense, go in like because uh, Klitschko was on the same with Pulev because he had to. It brought the beast out of Klitschko because at that time. Klitschko was just, just boxing his ways to wins or or beating them into submission later in the fights. But that one, it, it, it woke the beast in him and he had to just go, right, I need to get rid of this fella sharpest because he, he is dangerous. And, you know, good stands up boxers, straight punches, but I think Joshua can get the, the, the big success where he's at his best. And I believe Joshua's at his best when he's punching mid, mid-range. The speed and power of his punches mid-range, that, that's... That's where he can do pull off, because um, pull off can't fight at that range. It's long range, or he'll, he'll grab up close and grab a punch around the back of the head. I think mid range, you know, Joshua, Joshua can just get him, get him out of there early, um, because it can be, it could be a long night if you if you're going into a boxing match. It's all right boxing Andy Lewis for twelve rounds. He was never going to outbox Joshua, but pull off could outbox him. Do you think Pulev's looking at that first fight with Andy Ruiz with a different mentality? Because 
Kubrat Pulev was meant to obviously fight Joshua a couple of years ago uh, before, obviously, he was out and Takam come in. But do you think he's kind of looking at this f- off the back of that Ruiz win with a different approach going into the fight? Yeah, they will have given him all pony because at the time when he was supposed to fight Joshua, he, he beat Klitschko in that unbelievable fight. He was going, you know, he was going through everyone and, and he still has a path from, from Ruiz. But, um, you know, it was a lot more of a daunting task. He, he has lost that aura of invincibility now, hasn't he, Joshua? Because he, he's proven he's only human and he can be beat. And he got beat up pretty badly in the end, in the first fight. So that, that's given everyone up who's, who's going to get in the ring with him. And Pulev's a, Pulev's a confident fella. He, you know, he believes in himself. Um, so that'll just boost it even more. The difference is, I don't think Pulev is a as good as clinical a puncher as Andy Rivers. He hasn't got the same hand speed in, in that and in that range. He, he beat Joshua to the punch. Uh, Rivers, he was beating him to the punch because he was shorter with shorter arms. I think I think Pulev's going to try and make it rough to, to get the, the knockout win, as in, like I was saying before, once he's up close, he's going to try and club Anthony Joshua. And I think he's just going to attack that body from early on. And I think, you know, if you think about it, if he's in close trying to club, that's when it could play into Joshua's hands and he could just let them overcut the nukes going. He's that powerful a puncher. You know, he, he, could, he could do him in that area. Before the the first Andy Ruiz fight, obviously, <coughs> well, aside from Team Ruiz and uh, a few hopefuls, I don't think anyone kind of predicted what was going to happen. That happened in, in Madison Square Garden. But I, I find with, with, with the middle fight, with um, the middle fight, the, the second fight with... Andy Ruiz, no one was talking about any opponents for, for Anthony Joshua. This time round, there's all this talk of Tyson Fury uh, almost like, not disrespecting, um, I'm not talking about Joshua, I'm talking about the outside public, talking about yeah. the Fury fight as, as though Pulev isn't there. And it is sometimes a little bit of a concern that fighters go into fights with that big yeah. fight kind of in, in the pipeline and, and trying to kind of focus on this. Yeah. No, Joshua will say that he's focused on Pulev, but there is that huge fight with Tyson Fury that is looming for next year. Yeah, it, it's definitely going to play a part in his mentality and, and his experience as he is now and, 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 and uh, how good a performer he is. It will be in his mind and it, it's whether it, he's, he's going to take his eye off the ball on this one or it's going to create more pressure going into this one and it's going to restrict him a little bit with his performance where he's a little bit tense and he's a little bit more nervous because there's a hell of a lot more to lose in this fight for him than there is for Pulev. Um, and, it, and it will play a part. I've been in a, I've been in a position like that myself and on a much smaller scale earlier in my career. And it, you do start looking at one fight and it, 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 it's just human nature. You know, it's human nature for you to, to kind of kind of spend more time thinking about uh, that than you should when really your, your focus should obviously just be on whatever training you're doing on each day in an ideal world to take one training session at a time but it's it's not that easy you know when uh, you, you, if you're going to focus on a fight focus on the fight that you're ready to go into mm. um, Yeah, cause I'm sure this week Josh is going to get hounded with questions aside from kind of Kubrat Pulev about Tyson Fury. I'm sure those questions are going to come from the media this week, which is kind of normal uh, to happen. But it just yeah. you wonder how kind of his mentality is around that, about talking yeah. about that without really focusing on it. Because without, if he loses to Pulev this year, then that fight, I mean, it can still happen, but the emphasis around, around that fight kind of weakens, doesn't it? Yeah, it, it's, um, it's, it's, it's the same with the. Uh... It was the old say Wilder fight, wasn't it? That was yeah. supposed to be happening with the Ruiz. So, so he's been in this position before. So he, he's, he's surely got to blame from it. You know, um, he definitely did have one eye on that that one, that Wilder thing that was going on. It was all, it was all that was getting mentioned, wasn't it, at that time? Was it Wilder or Fury was no, supposed it was to be fighting? Time because obviously, yeah, yeah. 
Wilder, Wilder was still WBC champion, so it would have been Wilder. That's there. right. Yeah, he, yeah, yeah, and and so yeah, this this um, it's it's a massive fight, isn't it, for that reason? But I think it's just a big fight in its own right because Pulev's been in that position for that long. He's top five everywhere in the world. You know, you could argue the toss that he's better. He's a better fighter than Povetkin. You know, and Povetkin's right up there still. Um, so yeah, it's 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 a it's a good fight in its own right. But like I said, it's it, it's only natural that he's going to be thinking about the fight, the big fight, which is which is huge, isn't it? Um, and he's got other obstacles to overcome as well, like fighting in front of no fans and, you know, after... after There's going to be a thousand fans there this week for the first yeah, time. Which, which, is, which is great, it's but he has... He has still he, a thousand fans there, yeah. Yeah, which is great, but he hasn't got the... Um, he hasn't fought in front of no fans to appreciate having a thousand fans, if you know what I mean. Like like Liverpool did the other night, Liverpool were like a different team because they had 2,000 fans in there because they've had no one in there. But then the Saudi fight was was a low key job, wasn't it? With not many people there, different type of atmosphere from what he used to. So it might have served him well to have had that fight in in uh, Saudi Arabia against Rubus. Well, we shall see what happens. David, what's uh, what's happening with you at the minute? Any updates? No, not really. I've been, I've actually been in the gym though for a couple of weeks doing a bit of bit of training, getting myself fit and that, um, with a view to seeing. How the land lies after Christmas, you know. Um, so yeah, I'm just just gonna see what happens. Uh, I'm gonna gonna get myself fit and see see what's what, and uh, could could see me back in the ring next year at some point. It's just obviously gonna be when things are back to normal. You know, I, I can't see myself getting on one of these uh, no fan shows. Uh, I don't know. I might do. I don't know. We'll see. That that's ever go again. Have you been offered anything over this last sort of three months? No, nothing, nothing, nothing at all. I haven't had a call, nothing. Um, but, you know, I think if I make it made it be known I was looking for a fight, there'd, there'd be something there because there's people want to see heavyweight fights. There's heavyweights coming through. There's there, there's, there's fights out there for me. It's just whether um, people are willing to put it on a show that has no fans where, you know... Incomes restricted, isn't it? The revenue's a bit restricted, so it's all it's all about that. But I'll just I'm just gonna get myself fit anyway, um, for my own sake. And then after Christmas, if 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 a call comes or if I see, you know, if I think right, I'm, I fancy fighting him, I might just drop it in and, and uh, go from there. Just uh, just quickly, what what are your thoughts on uh, Kuzman's fight with Mike Bacoli? I think it's a, I think it's a it's gonna could be fight of the night. I think it's a good clash of styles. They both throw plenty of leather, um, and both come forward to to have a go, to have a fight. So, I think uh, going off my own experience with Kuzman, although it, you know it was a, it was a short notice job and didn't end in the best circumstances for me. I just think um, he, he he's there to be hit, and he, he could be beaten by the right boxing brain. And I think if Bacoli can just just box him really. I think I think he can stop him later on. Well, that will be uh, this Saturday. So, um, David, thank you very much for your time this evening. Yeah. And um, yeah, I'll let you crack on with your night and uh, hope Thanks. to catch up with you again very soon. Sunday, I'll speak to you. Yeah, yeah we'll have a little reaction yeah. this Saturday. Uh, Sunday. All right, mate. All right, mate. Thanks, Gugan. Take care. Thank Good you very much. You, mate. Nice. Look after yourself. This is something that comes along every now and then in generation, and it's special. Is your debt causing you sleepless nights? Knock your debt out with Debt KO. And your debt won't be the only thing keeping you up at night. Debt KO, free, impartial advice on all your debt.